stop being faithful through this year he has remained faithful he has remained faithful and he has remained good With every breath that we have you will always have a reason to sing about the goodness of God in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus God has never stopped being faithful. He has never failed being faithful. All our lives we have been so good. So good. With every breath that we're able, we're going to sing of the goodness of God. Yes. And that be our testimony. We will sing of the goodness of God in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Welcome everyone to Thursday prayer meeting. We're just going to uh, go into a time of prayer. Father God, we thank you for another opportunity to come together as a church, to pray with one another, to fellowship with one another. As we begin to pray today, O oh God, let us be revived in your presence. Let us find strength in your presence to continue moving forward as we go to the end of the year. We're already in November, so December is not that far away. We thank you, God, for, for how, how you've taken us so far this year, how, how we have come, where we have come from, and where we are now. We pray, O oh God, that our testimony would be that you have always and continue to remain faithful. That our testimony would be that we always have a reason to continue to sing of the goodness of God. May that forever be our testimony. We give you all the praise for what you're about to do this evening. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. 
we're going to dive straight into a time of prayer. And I want to start by reading a scripture, and then we'll explore that in a bit more detail. I want to read Psalm 34 verse 8 um, from the Amplified Version. It says, O oh, taste and see that the Lord our God is good. Blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied is the man who trusts and takes refuge in him. That same scripture in the Easy Read Version says, Give the Lord a chance to show you how good he is. Great blessings belong to those who depend on him. So today I want us to, to pray by encouraging one another in the knowledge of the goodness of God. You know, the, the, the word of God says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Give the Lord a chance to show you just how good he is. And it says, blessed, happy, fortunate are those who trust in him, who find refuge in him, who depend on him. And I thought, you know, that's such a great scripture because it's letting us know that when we choose to depend on God, when we choose to trust in God, we're also opening up ourselves to experience the goodness of God. We're also opening up ourselves to taste and to see that the Lord is good. And so we're just going to pray today about God's goodness, the goodness of God. Um, and the way I want to do this is I'm just going to read a couple of scriptures that really highlights God's goodness. And as I read the scriptures, if there's anything in particular that sticks with you or, you know, just kind of grabs your attention, um, I want you to, to pause on that chapter and, and that scripture and just begin to pray on that scripture as it concerns your life and the, and the phase that you're in in this moment. And so let's get into it. We're going to be praying about the goodness of God. And I just want to pray that, oh Lord, as we read these scriptures highlighting your goodness, that there will be a word for everyone that's on the call and that you minister to each and every one, including myself today, about your goodness and that we will not only experience it today, but we will carry this experience with us tomorrow and the next day and for weeks to come and for months to come in the name of Jesus. So thinking about God's goodness, I want to start with Psalm 31 verse 19. Psalm 31 verse 19. And it says, How great is your goodness, which you have stood up for those who fear you, which you have prepared for those who take refuge in you before the sons of men. And I wanted to start with this because I, I I wanted to set the scene to say that God's goodness is so great that he has a storehouse just waiting. <laughs> There's a storehouse that he has of his goodness just waiting to shower and to outpour and to bless you with it. And he says that this storehouse is especially prepared for those who take refuge in him. So the Lord is saying that as we take refuge in him, there is a storehouse, the word of God says there's a storehouse of goodness just waiting that he wants to shower and pour onto us. So what does God's goodness look like? How do we experience God's goodness when we take refuge, when we trust in him, when we step into his presence? And we're going to start with Psalms 34. I know we've read verse 8, but we're going to move down to uh, 17 to 19. So one of some of the ways that God's goodness shows up in our lives, you know, the scripture says, pray to the Lord and he will hear you. So one of the ways that, you know, God shows us his goodness is that we can pray to him and he hears us. It's not a matter of if he will hear us or might he hear us. The word of God says, Pray to him and he will hear you. It's a definite. So part of the way that God shows us his goodness is that he's attentive to us when we pray. And he says he will save us from all our troubles. So God shows us his goodness through his, by saving us from troubles. If you are experiencing trouble today, be rest assured that one of the ways that God shows his goodness and is willing and ready to show his goodness to you is to save you from all your troubles. 
It says, the Lord is close to those who have suffered disappointment. Is there anyone on the call today who has suffered disappointment? The word of God says that one of the ways that God shows us his goodness is that he's close to us when we suffer disappointment. And he saves those who are discouraged. Good people might have many problems, but the Lord will take them away. So some of the ways that God shows us his goodness is that he hears us when we call. He saves us in a time of trouble. He's close to us when we suffer disappointment. He saves those who are discouraged. And even when we have problems as Christians, says the Lord will take them away. And just hearing that, I just want us to go into a time of prayer. Whether any of those situations I've just read applies to you, or you might be holding yourself as a point of contact for people that you know who are either experiencing trouble right now, or have suffered from disappointment or discouragement for one reason or another, or experiencing problems. I want us to pray right now for come, come from a place of thanksgiving because the word of God says here that the way that he shows his goodness is that he's there to save us. He's there to be close to us during times of discouragement and disappointment, and he's there to take our, our problems away. And this is not, we're not just saying this because we're saying it for saints sake. We just read a couple of minutes ago that, that the scripture says that God has a storehouse of goodness just waiting, waiting for those who would take refuge in him. So just begin to thank him right now. And just begin to bring those things, whether it's discouragement or the problems or the troubles in the forefront of your mind and thank him because you're thanking him because you're rest assured that his goodness will overcome and will cover all those things in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for this time of encouragement. And we thank you, God, because your word says that we should come and see, come and taste the goodness of God. Your word says that we should give you a chance to show us your goodness. That you have a storehouse waiting, just prepared for those who come to you, who take refuge in you, who find who find peace in you, who depend on you during times of problems. And we just read that one of the, some of the ways that you show your goodness is in the time of trouble you are there. In the time of disappointment you are close. Father God, we pray today that we would witness the tangible experience of your goodness as we go through problems and troubles. That we would witness the tangible experience of your goodness as we face discouragement. Oh, as we face disappointments, because those are the ways, those are some of the ways that you show us that you are good. And we are holding that as an anchor, that you are always faithful. You're always good. You are always merciful. So we thank you because as we have read it, we will experience it, so shall it be in our lives in the name of Jesus. Another way that we experience God's goodness can be seen seen in Romans 8 28 it's quite a common uh, scripture that we say but sometimes when we slow down and we let it sink in it's it, it's it's quite a uh, it brings a lot of comfort and refuge Romans 8 38 says 28 says and I'm just going to it now it says and we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes all things to work together as a plan for good for those who love God. And as we read that, you know, the first thing that struck me is, as we know with great confidence, where does that great confidence comes from? That great confidence comes from an understanding that God is good. And because he's good, he shows that through deep compassion. He's deeply concerned about the things that happen to us. Everything that happens happens to us. The Bible says that God is deeply concerned about it. And the ways that he shows his goodness is that he causes. So there's an intentional, there's an intention, there's an intentionality to it. He purposefully causes things to work together for a good almost like it was a plan and it's interesting because a lot of times we don't see that things are working together for our good at, 
as we are experiencing it in the moment. And often it's in hindsight as we look back and we look at that experience and we say, wow, it was tough, but I thank God because this is what happened. And, and I think I, I'm highlighting that because when we say that, we're saying that because the, 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 the words have become a reality in our lives. So we have actually experienced God orchestrating things that happen in our lives to work together for our good. And this is an example of God's goodness. So one of the ways that God shows his goodness is through deep compassion and through care and being intentional in ensuring that no matter what the situation is like, he's moving the pieces together so that it works for our good. So that when we look back at the situation, we can say thank you. And then we look back at the situation, no matter how difficult it was, it is possible to have a testimony out of that situation. And that is what God's goodness looks like. And, and as I say that I'm thinking about this year and whoo, this year, and I just want us to pray that as we look back, and, and, and for some of us, we might have already experienced this, but as we look back at the months that have passed, that Romans 8.28 will be the words that come out of our lips. That Romans 8.28 will be our testimony that when we talk about the goodness of God, that what we will say is yes, with great confidence, surely God made sure that everything I was experiencing worked together for my good and I thank him for that. Let us pray that that would be our testimony in the name of Jesus as we look back at the last couple of months that these words will come alive in our lives. And if we are currently going through an experience, we pray that those words of that the Holy Spirit will help those words be one that we hold on to. That even when we cannot see how things are working together for our good, we will be anchored on the fact that God himself is good. And because he's good, surely those things are going to work together for our good. In the name of Jesus. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. So look at another scripture here. And, and I know that I'm going through a number of scriptures, but like I said, please, if as we go through a scripture, it, it's ministers to you, please stay on that scripture and continue to meditate on that. Because I'm just going to be going through a number of scriptures that really highlight the goodness of God and how God shows his goodness in our lives every day. This is a prayer of encouragement for those who need to be encouraged right now. Another way that God shows his goodness can be seen in Matthew 6. From verse 25 to 34 and again it's another common scripture um, but it highlights that one of the ways that God shows his goodness is to quiet out uncertainty and I don't know about you but this year has been one of a lot of uncertainties and the way one of the ways that God shows his goodness is that he quiets out uncertainties Matthew 6 verses verses 25 to 34 reads therefore I tell you do not worry about your life what you will eat or drink or about your body what you would wear is not life more than that than food and the body more than clothes look at the birds of the air they do not sow or reap or store away in barns and yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you, not mo are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If this is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Do not worry saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear. And as I'm saying those things not to worry, you can put into that the things that have 
been coming up for you in terms of worry. So for you, it might be do not worry about your health or where your next paycheck is going to come to come from or what is going on with your family member, your loved ones. So insert in that place what your worries are. But Jesus was saying here, do not worry about those things. It says, for the pagans run after all these things, but your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And I think that this, uh, this scriptures really highlight the goodness of God because Jesus was saying here, do not worry about these things because I will provide for you. He was literally saying, why do you worry about these things? Not because he's, he, he, he didn't think they were worth worrying about, but because he said, I will provide for you. It says the word of God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Once you seek me, once you take refuge in me, once you trust in me, once you come into my presence, I will provide these things for you. So right now, we're going to go into a time of prayer about worries. See, one of the ways that God shows his goodness is to silent out the thoughts of uncertainties and the thoughts of worries. And so now we're going to call, go into a time of prayer about worries using Matthew 6, 25 to 34 as a point of, as a point of reference. And just begin to, to, to note what these worries are. And as they come up, I want you to begin to say that even though these worries are here, because of God's goodness, that all things are going to work together. That as Jesus has said, as you seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be given unto me. So just begin to, to name those worries and end it by saying, and because of who I trust in and because of who I depend in, these things are going to happen the way that God wants them to happen. And as we've read, the way that God orchestrates things to happen is to work together for our good. So whether our worries become a reality or whether they don't happen, it doesn't matter because the word of God says that God's goodness is so great is a storehouse worth that everything works together for our good and that he will provide for us and just see a simple prayer that father god when i find myself overwhelmed with worries help me lord in those moments to seek your kingdom first help me lord in those moments to come to you because your word says that when i seek your kingdom all things will be provided unto me in the name of jesus and we pray oh god that we'll experience god's goodness in such a way that it will silence out the uncertainty because when we are when we are assured and resting on god even the things that are sensitive doesn't matter because God says that it would all work together for our good. So Father God, help us in times of worries and uncertainty to remember that you are here and you are ready and you are willing to provide for us. It might not always be the way we think you're going to provide. It might not be at the timing of when we think you are going to provide. And it might not even be... Um, in the manner or by the people that we are expecting that you would use as a point of contact to provide and even when those are expectations of how you're going to provide doesn't fit help us god to trust you enough to be okay with that and to accept that even when things don't go the way we want it that you are still god and your will is ultimately the best for our lives in the name of jesus amen amen Amen. So now we're going to go to Psalm 23. And I wanted to read Psalm 23 because we say this every time we say the grace. We say, surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. We say that all the time when we say the grace, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And that is the last verse of Psalm 23. 
and the word there surely it's it's so it's definite surely has no doubt surely has no but what if surely it's it's um comes with with strength and confidence that yes yes definitely but of course god's goodness and mercy is following me all the days of my life and i wanted us to read 23 because psalm, psalm chapter 6 is the conclusion of that chapter so chapter verse 1 2 3 4 and 5 illustrate why we are so certain and sure that god's goodness follows us all the days of our lives so we're just going to read from chapter uh, verse 1 to understand some of the ways that God shows his goodness and why we can hold on to that certainty ourselves that God's goodness and mercy would always follow us all the days of our lives. And this was written by David. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I'm reading from the easy to read version. So your version might be different. But it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I will always have everything I need. And it's interesting because when we looked at Matthew 6, it's almost, it links quite well. Because, you know, Matthew 6 why do you, says, why do you worry? Because I will provide for you. Everything you need, I will provide for you. And chapter, verse 1 of chapter 23 says, because the Lord will always provide everything I need. What does it mean for the Lord to be our shepherd? And I was looking at this, you know, what, 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 is, what are the roles of a shepherd? It says the shepherd is a watchman. A shepherd is always looking out for, 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 for danger or anything that could potentially uh, cause harm to us. A shepherd is a watchman and a shepherd is a guard. So God does not only watch out for us all the time. You know, we read that God is deeply concerned. He's always looking at what is happening to us. He says God is not only just watching out for us all the time, but he guards us. He protects us. A shepherd also guards. And a shepherd guides. So he's not only watching over us, he's not only guarding us, but he's also guiding us. He's guiding our steps. He's guiding where we go. A shepherd is a physician. So even when we stumble along the way as he's guiding us, he's able to heal us. He's able to redeem us. He's able to revive us. He's able to restore us. So the Lord is our watchman. He's our God. He's our guide. He's our physician. The Lord is our savior. He's always there, willing and ready to save us. The Lord is our provider. A shepherd is a provider. As the shepherd is guiding the sheep and, and, and guarding them, he's also providing for them, making sure that they have food and water and shelter. So a shepherd provides. And it says a shepherd is a lover. A shepherd cares about his sheep, the flock. A shepherd cares, wants to make sure that nothing happens to his flock. And so when we say the Lord is our shepherd, we are really defining the goodness of God. That the Lord is the, is, he is the, he's our watchman, he's our guide, he's our God, he's our physician, he's our provider, he's our savior, he's our lover. This is who the Lord is to us. This is who he, and if we don't experience God this way, it's interesting because the word of God says this is who God wants to be to us. And says God is waiting for us to take refuge in him. And when we are finding refuge in him, this is the relationship that God wants to have with us. This is the goodness of God. So the Lord is our shepherd. That carries a lot of weight. That is like, it's a, it's a word loaded with goodness. And he provides for everything that we need. And then it's no surprise then that verse 2 says, He gives me green pastures to lie in. He leads me by calm pools of water. So when we allow God to lead, when we allow God to guide us, He's guiding us through a goodness direction. Because what we encounter is green pastures. What we encounter is calm pools of water. And just now, I just want us to stop here and to pray that, Father God, may we experience what it means to fully have you as a shepherd. Father God, help us to experience in, in, in fully 
what it means for you to be our shepherd. And in areas of our lives where we're struggling to relinquish control and allow you to lead as a shepherd, we pray, oh God, that you help us to step back and help and let you lead so we can fully experience your goodness as our shepherd in the name of Jesus. And we can fully experience what it's like to be guided to still waters, to be guided to green pastures in the name of Jesus. Verse three says, he restores my strength and he leads me on right right paths to show that he is good. He restores my strength and he leads me on right paths to show that he is good. So God is not only good, but he wants to show you that he is good. God is not only good, he wants to show you that he is good. And the ways that he shows you that he is good is by leading you, is by guiding you. He wants to show you that he is good and the way that he does that is by leading you and guiding you. And verse 4 says, even if I walk through a valley as dark as the grave, I will not be afraid of any danger because you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. And again, that describes what it means to have God as a shepherd. He's a good shepherd. That even when we find ourselves in a valley as dark as the grave, Fear, fear, we're not afraid, we're not afraid because it's not, it's not fearful. We're not afraid because we don't find ourselves in terrifying situations. And I know I preached about this a while ago, but it says that our confidence comes because he's with us. So part of God's goodness is that he never leaves us or forsakes us. And his rod and staff is always there to comfort us, to give us refuge, to give us peace. Father God, let us experience that in the name of Jesus. Let us experience that in the name of Jesus, that even when we are in in situations that seem so dark as the grave, that we will hold on to the fact that you are with us, that we'll hold on to the fact that your presence is with us, that your rod and your staff will comfort us in the name of Jesus. And it says you prepare a meal for us in front of our enemies. You welcome us as an honored guest. Our cup is full and spilling over. Now, when we read that, then surely, surely God's goodness and mercy will follow us because God is our shepherd. God is constantly there as our watchman. God is constantly there as our guide. God is constantly there as our God. God is constantly there as our physician. God is constantly there as our lover. And whatever you need God to be, I just want you to tap into that. Is it as a watchman? Say, God, I thank you because in this season, I will experience you as my watchman. Is it as a guide? God, I thank you because in this season, you will order my steps and my direction in which way I should go. Is it as a guard? Say, God, I thank you because you are here to protect me and to save me. And when I find myself going down in the pit, you are here to lift me up. Is it as a love? I say, God, I thank you because where I cannot find comfort in the world, I find it in you. Where I cannot find companion in the world, I find it with you, in you. Is it as a physician? Say, God, I thank you because you are my physician. Where I need healing, you are there to give me healing. Where I need strength, you are there to give me strength. Just begin to pray and begin to thank him. Call upon who he is and say I thank you because in this situation I will experience you as that in the name of Jesus and I will experience your goodness in the name of Jesus we will experience your goodness in the name of Jesus and Father God you know I always pray this prayer but it, it always keeps coming up you know when I when I think about God and his goodness that God may we not strive in areas where you have already made it easy for us And the only thing that is standing in the way of of tapping into what you have done is because we haven't leaned on you or we haven't sought your face or we haven't, haven't, haven't gone to you for refuge. Father God, in areas where you have made things light, help us, oh God, not to strive in that. Help us to tap into your goodness in the name of Jesus. Help us to tap into your goodness in the name of Jesus. May we experience the storehouse of your goodness in the name of Jesus. 
Just begin to pray that in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for this word of encouragement today. That you are truly good. And we hold on to your goodness as we go through life. We hold on to your goodness as we navigate through life. Because your goodness is our certainty. Not because of anything that we have done or not done. Not by our power, not by our might, but by your spirit and by your goodness. And we thank you because that is what we're going to anchor ourselves to. That's what we're anchoring ourselves to this evening. And that's what we'll always anchor ourselves to is that God is good. If not anything at all, God is good. And because of his goodness, he's forever faithful. Because of his goodness, he's forever faithful. And because of his goodness, surely when we look back at our lives and we look back at situations, we will always be able to say that everything worked together for our good in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for this time of prayer. We thank you, God, for reminding us that you are ready and willing and always there to help. And all you require from us is to take that step to rely on you, to depend on you, to trust in you. And when we do, your word says that we will experience, we will taste, we will see your goodness. And there are many ways to experience your goodness. And we thank you, God, because the more we spend time with you, the more we'll begin to uh, to experience layers and depths of what your goodness looks like in our lives. We will see you as a healer. We will see you as a savior. We will see you as a provider. We will see you as a watchman. We will see you as a guide. We will see you as a guard. We will see you as a physician. We will see you as a lover in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Heavenly Father, because your word also says, because of your goodness, when we pray, you hear us. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining me in this time of prayer this evening. And I hope that you've been blessed. And if there's been any scripture that we have read today um, that struck you or touched you as we were praying, Please go back to that scripture and meditate on that scripture and hold on to it. And, and, you know, when you need to be reminded of God's goodness, bring that scripture back up again and pray that to remind yourself that surely God is good and surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Amen and amen. And so right now, I'm just going to go into a time of offering. Um, just to say that if you are a member of Fountain of Life Church and you want to give into the house and what God is doing in this house, um, please feel free to give your offering. And you can do that by um, paying that into one of our accounts. And if you stumbled on this uh, prayer today and you do not go to Fountain of Life Church London, but you want to give to what God is doing, please send us a DM um, and we will be more than happy to send you our account details. Um, So now we're going to say the grace. Um, And of course, as always, we'll see you on Sunday for another good time in God's presence. So let's just say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest inside of us. And quickly our mortal bodies to the glory of his holy name. Amen. I feel like that's the first one, isn't it? I've, I've just kind of lost track. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and amen, forever and ever. Amen. For the law of the spirits of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. And so sin shall not have dominion over us, but the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside of us and quickens our mortal bodies to the glorious holy name. Amen. Amen. For a second, I was like, whoa, what, what, what is the grace? <laughs> it's been a long day. Well, I, I, I hope you've been blessed today. Have a lovely evening and um, we'll see you on Sunday. Bye for now. Bye.